Welcome to the Whiskey Roundtable. We are your hosts, Big G, Karen Helen Keller, Doc Dunbar, back for the first time, Gary Coe, and I'm Albert Santilli. <laughs> What's sure, up, Albert we... Santilli? And same old, same old. I'm happy to be here. Right. Just happened to be here. Just, Just happened to be here. Right. <laughs> Just in case somebody thought Albert Santilli was here today. That's right. We, right up. Yeah. we yeah. happened to run into him at a nice little restaurant down the road. Yeah, we did. Gabby. Gavi Mexican. Baza Gavi. Baza Gavi. Very good. Fantastic. Great food, great margaritas. Yeah. yeah. Awesome chips and salsa. Although sure. Fun Sucker wouldn't let me bring home a pitcher of margaritas. Well, we gotta go. Wah, we gotta wah. go. Wah, wah. Wah, yeah. <laughs> I, think you have, I think you have enough at home you could supply 10 Mexican Yeah, but these are already made. Yeah. By real Mexicans. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly. They're already made. Come on. So we're continuing in with, uh, wow, continuing with Wild Turkey Month. <laughs> Who said that? Yeah, first day on the show. Yeah, so <laughs> featuring another Wild Turkey tonight. Yes, sir. So we'll get to that a little bit later. And uh, what are we smoking tonight, guys? I am smoking a uh, La Flor Dominicana Double Ajero cigar. It's a, a, almost a nine-inch cigar. 
60 ring gauge. It's Very heavy, probably one of the heaviest cigars you'll ever smoke in your life. It's heavy as in bold. It's, it's and so bold and, and uh, uh, very strong. It's very dark. Very yes. dark wrapper. Thank you for noticing. Yes. Excuse I me like, while I whip I this like, out. No, I'm just kidding. I like yeah. it. I, you know, <laughs> if I, I'll, whenever I've had one, which isn't too often, I like the dark. I, I yeah. just learned I Great like the cigar. dark wrapper. Yeah. You're stuck on this. This is an A Fuente. It's, it's like really good. Oh, I can't. I, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, what kind of uh, you know. and and so what is what do you what do you this got? is a Fuente Gran Reserva is but I might step it up later to a Camacho Camacho Nic Camacho Nicaraguan cigar okay and it's, okay. it's <laughs> aged in rum barrels it sure it's is tobacco, sure think. is yeah so you know I've heard it that's one of the best cigars, cigars do go together so. beautiful yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm smoking a cigar of our sponsor Royal Havana there you go I call it the Four Seasons this is part of the Legacy line we have four different wrappers. So the, so the taste changes a little bit every time. So you get four it little is. cigars. I smoked. Uh, I nice. smoked that last night. Actually, I smoked two of those last night. You two were there last night. I was there last night. Yeah. Huh. I had one myself. Figure I would have heard about it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, it was actually a private get together, believe it or not. But well, at least we tried to make it private. But that kind of didn't happen. It didn't happen. But, yeah. but uh, I had a friend of mine come in with another friend that works for the company and. Uh, they wanted to do something just private, you know, just uh, me and them two and Dave, and uh, it, but it ended up not turning out that way. But they drank all our booze. That was really nice of everybody there. If you guys don't mind, I wanted to talk about the flavor profile so. real quick. It's, yeah, go ahead. Greg gave me one of those a long time ago, a while ago. Yes. Very good. Starts off light, mm -hmm. like you said, changes. And at the very, very end, I was surprised at how powerful. It's very spicy. It is very the best spicy. way to describe yes, it. It just sir. gets spicy. Absolutely. It's not hot at the end. It's not bad. It's just spicy. No, it's not. It's not, it's not temperature hot, but it. it, it you yeah. know that. You know that. It. There's some uh, punch in the tobacco for sure. Absolutely. Well, there's only about one other brand I know of that mixes a Maduro with a Candela in the same cigar. And that uh, Candela is great because we don't uh, we don't uh, freeze that tobacco. What's a Candela? It's a it's a tobacco leaf, and if you freeze it. That's how you get the green color. Oh, yeah, Candela is the okay. green, right? The green. So that's how he. Yeah. The, what is the new cigar he has with the green? That's what he's shop? talking about. Oh, that's, okay, yeah. So yeah. it's blended. It's one with, of them. It's, that's a cigar that's blended with part of it that you're going to smoke through is the Candela. It's awesome. Awesome cigars. Very, and very good. what am I smoking? Thanks you can for order asking. online. <laughs> Rollhavana.com. I believe. You're supposed to get the grape. It is. It smells it, like grape. It yeah. is. It's a Tatiana. Tatiana. It's, it's a groovy blue. Mm -hmm. And I got my, my girl over there smoking some Tatianas as well. But you've it's, got vanilla. It's very grapey. It kind of reminds me of Mad Dog during my uh, fraternity days. Uh, 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 That's that dog. very grapey, uh, fortified odor. So, yeah. I love it's good, it. Though. It's good. Very tasty. So, what's, uh, what's new? Who's got anything? Well, I'll tell you what, it was kind of a low key week for me, yeah. so to say. And uh, that's really, we uh, had this conversation at dinner, so to say, when we, uh, Ms. Shona asked, uh, What could happen to you this week? I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm breathing. I'm breathing. Start. So, uh, yeah, I just, I kind of had a low key weekend and uh, it was kind of quiet at the office, which was nice. And just kind of, we got caught back and. And uh, now I just got to get my office finished up. And we had a nice storm this weekend. We did have a nice storm this weekend. Yes. We did. I'll put a little spin on that real quick. Why don't we go around the table and say okay. what we're thankful for? Because okay. Thanksgiving's right around the corner. We might not get to see all, spend it all with you, and follow you right up that tree. All right. Are you, are you going first or am I going first? I'll well, why don't it, I'll we kick it off. You get yeah, I was going to say, go around the table. Um, I'm thankful that I have most all, all of my hair and most of my teeth still. <laughs> Getting you're older. not wearing a diaper. And, uh, yeah, I'm a healthy How do you know? family. Uh, what, about you? You, what about me? I'm grateful that I have some hair left. No, I'm, I'm grateful for a lot of things. The list is long. So, uh, you know, health, uh, happiness, uh, friends. Uh, you know, we uh, get a, we spend a lot of time together throughout the year. So, it's. Uh, I mean, you guys are like, everybody here is like family. So... It's. Uh, I think I'm probably closer to all you than I am to whatever family I have left. So, but uh, you know, I'm I'm thankful for that. that Obviously, they healthy. don't watch the show. They don't watch the show. Yeah. <laughs> but if they are, they're not surprised. Bastards! I really, I really can't stand them. <laughs> but anyway, but uh, no. So, 
But it, uh, I'm, I'm happy. I have a lot to be happy for. I mean, sometimes I don't act like it, but I really do. So, I mean, there's, uh, you know, I've done a lot of things in my life that people work hard to, to have and go and never get the chance. So, I mean, I'm okay with that. So, every time you think you got a bad day, someone else has a worse day. Trust me when I tell you. Yeah, they say you throw your problems in a pile. Mm -hmm. You're going to pick your own out before right. you take someone else's. So. Yeah, but I, I hate getting my hand in that toilet, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, usually you, you have your tongue in there. So, I do, you know, that's but a good only thing. when the water's cold. <laughs> so <laughs> you and Jimbo can be competing for space. Mm -hmm. Jimbo, he, he, I came home. I just let him out. He walks in the door. pees right on the floor. I'm just like, dude, what are you doing? So he got his little dupa smack with my wow, sandal. Turkey. Turkey. Yeah, turkey. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going around the table. I will have to say, family, friends. Um, it's been a rough year this year. It has been a rough year for a lot uh, of people. We have lost a lot of great friends yeah. and, and family. And sure. uh, I'm glad that we still have this, this group together with us and we're able to celebrate being together tonight. Um, I'm also grateful for alcohol because of this awful effing year. If it wasn't for alcohol, I don't know if I could still be here. So I would like to thank alcohol. All right. <laughs> Well, I mean, me too, or friends, uh, <laughs> right? right? Or my family, of course, and just having the opportunity to do this every week or most weeks is right. something I'm grateful for, a uh, good whiskey and, and all those things. So also grateful, I heard that uh, Starbucks is going to put out, uh, of all companies, going to put out cups now with uh, religious quotes on them. Oh. The very first one to say, Jesus, this cup is expensive. So. <laughs> Nice. I love oh, this. my goodness. <laughs> I'm thankful for a spineless governor who thinks I should be home by 10 o'clock tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not happening. We might not make it. Yeah. Hey, but you're working. This he's is got a, a job. Better chance. You're here working. He's got so. a better chance of growing six inches than he does anybody hanging out going home by 10 o'clock. So. Mm. I had a leader curfew in sixth grade. Right. I never had a curfew. Uh, my, my no, dad, your my, parents were afraid of you. No, my, my, our, our curfew was this. <laughs> You can stay out as long as you want to, but the first time the cops knock on our door, your ass is done. So, so we always live by those rules. Sounds like your parents. And we were home every night early in the morning, but we were home. You were more afraid of your parents than you were the cops, though. That's Come true. On. That's true. Especially your mother. My mother. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Mom, are you having Thanksgiving down there? What are you doing? Okay. Are you guys cooking for Thanksgiving? I'm going are to we? do a prime rib and some other stuff. I'm not sure, but... Karen doesn't cook. I let, I let Shauna do most of the cooking. I'm more this. I like to do this. Be the sous chef. Ah. You're the bartender. But, yeah, and and actually, onions make me sad, but most people don't know that. <laughs> yeah, they cry. Um, hey, that reminds me, <laughs> dude. Anthony's. I'm thankful for Anthony's <laughs> Men's Barber Shop in Bainbridge, it's located on 2681 Creekside Drive, Twinsburg, Ohio, or Bainbridge, Ohio. And if you're just now tuning in, he's raffling a $30 gift certificate off on this show. Right. If you comment in the comment section and you say, you mention your favorite whiskey or bourbon and mention Annie, Anthony's, you have a chance One to win. One of you will we'll, we'll, uh, we'll pick a winner at we'll the end of the show. We'll do a totally random drawing and we'll pick, pick somebody before the show's over. And so. if you say your favorite guest is Gary, I'll rig it. So the, re the reason <laughs> I thought about it was because... I think they're booking up quick. You want to not look like a hairy wildebeest before Thanksgiving in front of your family. Yeah, Come to Anthony's Barbershop. Right? Yeah. Oh, and we did somebody. It has to be somebody that lives in the area. Yes. Yeah, somebody lives. I, mean, I don't think locally. my friend Pat Patterson in Orange County, California. Could. Comment your favorite whiskey. Mention Anthony's. Get a chance to win this $30 gift certificate. And you also, it's good for a shave and a cut. There it is. Mm. Be looking good for, for Gobble Day. Amen. There you go. Amen. All right. Very good. So Thank you. We're, uh, what are we tasting today? We are, uh, we are tasting uh, wild turkey, uh, uh, what is it? Kentucky, Kentucky Spirit. Spirit. Single barrel. Single barrel. Excuse Kentucky me. Kentucky Spirit. Yeah. Uh, Wasn't there another bottle on the counter there? No? No. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm going to talk about Kentucky Spirit and the, the change in design of the bottles. That's what comes next, I think. 
yeah, part of part of my news, and uh, you know, yeah. always trying to find something different about wild yeah. turkey. I have to say, I, this is one that I I uh, actually really been looking forward to. I don't know exactly why, but uh, when I first saw it in the store and got it, I've been really uh, looking forward to it. So mm -hmm. I'm glad to uh, have it here on this Thanksgiving special. Of the whiskey round table. I'm still in shock that you scored last week a 4.8. I, I just have to go with, you know. Is that delicious? Did you see that? You I gave did. the scotch a 4.8 that night. Oh, he gave it a 5, I think. No, I didn't give it a 5. <laughs> you did? gave it a 5. Did I? Yes, you gave the smokehead a 5. I thought you gave it a 4.8. I thought you gave it a 4.8, too. Um... While we're on commercial, I'm gonna I can go back and there we go. Well, we'll please smack we'll, me, smack we, me if I gave it a five. <laughs> we will, uh, we will, yeah, we'll go look that up and then let the reviewers know on that one. <laughs> okay, nice ass hat. Thank you. You got a cone head with legs. I was bent over trying to catch this turkey, and a friend of mine kicked me in the ass, and this is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my trying goodness. to forget. Oh my goodness. Okay. You guys are killing me. Well, I'm glad you scored, man. That's good. Yeah, 4.8. Yeah, you did. The Russell's Same. Reserve, it was Russell's a Russell's Reserve, single barrel select. Yes, I gave it a 4.8. I'm sticking with it. As you see on the Whiskey Wizard, I was sampling it again. Yes. Uh, as you'll see later in the show. And uh, that did not have me change my score one iota, so I'm standing by it firmly. Okay. And uh, can I say four point eight? They have your kids held hostage. Or I didn't even think that. I didn't even think that a an American whiskey could could I could rate an American whiskey that high because I have to put all my favorite single malts on that zero five scale too. So, but there it is. All right, there it is. Um, That's so, saying something. I thank you, say, Wild Turkey, for that. That is definitely saying something. Yeah. Okay. What do we? Uh, uh, Karen's got some. Do we want to uh, commercial? Do we? What do oh. we want to do, kids? I want to. Do we have anybody? Uh, any on the scroll? Anyone on the scroll? Of course, oh, we got Jennifer. Jennifer. Jennifer's just making friends Hi, with Shana, everybody. Steve from Texas. He's Steve. out there enjoying right. the show. Mm -hmm. Mr. Williams. The stars at night are big oh, and bright, fine, deep, deep in the heart of Texas. Texas. <laughs> All right. We got at the top, anything? Um, what do we got at the top? No, we uh, we got we got uh, oh, yeah. oh. we got the regulars out here tonight. That's Jennifer, nice. Steve, yeah. Marion, Shauna. Yeah. So how my about dad's my dad's name is Russell? Jennifer says her dad's name is Russell, yeah. and she bought him a bottle of Reserve a few years ago, and they've been a fan forever or ever since. Pat Patterson, yeah. Glenn, Chris, let us know if you're out there. Come on, Snyder. What are you doing? So that's his Russell Reserve. Yeah. What about uh, Donnelly and? Uh... Donnelly's probably with Steve. <laughs> Are they spooning right now? Probably. Probably. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, no, no. <laughs> Who's the big spoon? What's that? Who's the big spoon? I'm gonna have to say Steve. Yeah. He's the tablespoon. Donnelly's the teaspoon. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. <laughs> just had to do it. Yeah, that margarita to go was not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Anyway, so uh, that's who we have online. Okay. All right. Well, some of them are out there, but they're just shy. They're quiet. Lurking. I can tell. We have our ways. Okay. Well, let's hear about. Steve. Are we going to go to commercial? Or are we going to do? Are we going to hear about Kentucky uh, Spirit first? What do you are we think? good on? Uh, Keep going? Okay. Yeah, all right. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. Let's keep going. So it's hard. You know, every November we do our Wild Turkey Month and, you know, just trying to come up with some new things. So um, I found an article about why whiskey geeks always have a bottle of Wild Turkey in their stash. Um, and there's some reasons for always having it's Good ones, I think. So it's, it's the Russell name. So you've got Jimmy Russell. He's got 60 years of dedication to distilling this and passing his knowledge on to his son, Ed, Eddie. Um, so you can't go wrong. Somebody with that knowledge and experience knows what he's doing. You can't go wrong with that. You know, no, no, no. The price 
So wild turkey can be very affordable. I mean, you can get into some of your more expensive ones like Master's Keep and that. But yeah, that one that I rated last week, four point eight, I think is what in the high fifties, yeah. maybe yeah. somewhere yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah but yeah. you you can go to your wild turkey one hundred and one that's you know in the thirty dollar range, and same with your, oh, yeah. your long branch. And that that is. Uh, Incidentally, there's like going to be a show coming up where we're going to do do some more blind taste testing. Oh. So that's actually oh. Uh, oh. rematch. Okay. I have some plans for that. So yeah, that's a good one. One hundred and one. Um, they also say the flavor profile of wild turkey. Um, so a lot of the less expensive bourbons don't have as much flavor, and they, and it can feel you getting hot. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, kids. No, you're good. A lot of the the most or less expensive bourbons can taste kind of young, kind of watered down, so to speak. Yeah, but they all have a full-bodied, spicy character. Exactly. Uh, that's kind of the profile, I would say. Lots of caramel. They're all mostly very rich and copper, you know, dark, coppery color. And sometimes nut skins, right, John? Yeah, nut skins. <laughs> I love nuts. <laughs> Um, then you all love nut skins. <laughs> <laughs> Nuts never have any skin in the game. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> and you know what? It, it could do. You could drink it with, um, in, in a mix with a Manhattan, mm-hmm. or an old fashioned, or you can drink it straight. It's very flexible, and you can um, whatever you yeah. want to do. That's another reason why they love having that there. Um, they mention the proof. Um, if you want a higher proof bourbon that's not expensive, and, and it kind of goes into the price and the flavor profile that we were talking about before, um, some of the less expensive are going to be lower proofs, 80, 90 range. Uh, wild turkey, you, you can bump up into the 100 or, or more, 101. Jimmy Russell thinks that a, a bourbon's meant to be drunk in that, you know, 100 to 120 range, so. That's kind of why a lot, of argue. Their, a lot of their stuff is in that range. So. Other stuffings in that range? Oh, no pun intended. <laughs> Stuffing is in that range. <laughs> so I looked at another article. So I was, this has me really intrigued, and I, and I can't wait to try this, because they said that um, Kentucky Spirit came out in 1994, and it seemed to be in response to Blanton's coming out. Um, and, and this is the bottle that I showed before. So it, it kind of comes in a very pretty bottle, handwritten, it's got yeah. a hefty top on it. Um, so they, they say it was kind of brought out to compete with, compete with Blanton's. Yeah, to have a, have a unique, I mean, that is a much, I think in some ways a prettier bottle than the current one, but I mean, it's a very decanter looking. Exactly. It has a little too much of Crown Royal to me, but... Oh, don't go there. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, on second thought. But they said in, in 2013, when Russell's came out, that's when they started to change the Kentucky spirit a little bit. So, not only did they change the bottle, which you can see up front, it totally changed its shape. They Some people will say that the flavor profile actually changed and they find it to be a little bit lighter than the original so because it was lighter people started to gravitate more towards the Russell's Reserve that we had Mm -hmm. last month or Mm -hmm. last week Um, but I don't know so I thought we got a little bit here and uh, after we try this maybe we can compare see if we notice anything all right well a lot of these bourbons I mean their bottle is their brand you know, you see a, sure. you know, like a Jim Beam product. You know, they're basically all the same bottle. Right. You know. So I think them going out of their way to make that bottle different, I think they're really putting it out there that, hey, this is different. Weird yeah. Makes sense. Hey, if you're just tuning in, remember to like and subscribe and uh, mention Anthony's and your favorite bottle of bourbon. You can win a $30 gift certificate on mention this Mention Anthony's episode. and uh, we'll be drawing, a, we'll draw on one of you later to... Uh, Win a thirty dollar. Or... Write a reminder in the in the comment section. Ah, good idea. You got that, Doug? Oh yeah, I'm on top of it. You got that? 
Yawn it like peanut butter. <laughs> You're looking good for Thanksgiving. You can sit at the big boy table. <laughs> oh, so much came to mind, but I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> what, with peanut butter? Or? Oh, oh, I'm just going to take a left at the stop sign, kid. <laughs> Oh, shit. Anyway, go ahead. Too funny. <laughs> no, I mean, that that's pretty much what I have there. Next up, deplatformed. <laughs> that's pretty uh, much and Wild really Turkey goodness. is also the the home of one of its uh, marketing directors, Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey, who I hear might be running for governor I of forget Texas. his exact yeah. title. California, right? California. Texas. Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Texas. Pro- director of promotions or something like that. Yeah, pro- creative director, I think he is. Yeah, so he... Dude, if you and I haven't gotten deep... I think that means he fun. hangs out with <laughs> Jimmy Russell and Eddie Russell and drinks. Drinks from bourbon. Is Long Branch affiliated with uh, Wild Turkey in any way? It is. It, it is. is Wild it's Turkey and it is Matthew McConaughey's uh, concoction yeah. with uh, the Russells. It's very good. Yeah, I like That's it. My my go to. I held off on buying it because it had a celebrity endorsement. I usually I, just I run away from anything that's endorsed by yeah, a celebrity. Right. I did the same thing. But I, I was at the, the cigar thing. shop and tried it, and then bought a bottle the next week. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Good good stuff. Hey, Gary, you ever see that movie, The Lincoln Lawyer, with Matthew McConaughey? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's I good good think so. Lincoln Lawyer, huh? Yeah, Lincoln it's Lawyer. Great. Check it out. I think it's on Netflix. Yeah. I think the last thing I saw him in was when he was doing the True Detective. Well, why don't we uh, go to commercial, and then when we come back, we can uh, do a little tasting. What do you think? All right, sounds good. We can do that. Let's do that. See you all in just a bit. Be right back in two and two. All right. Always wanted to do that. <laughs> all right, Chuck Woolery. <laughs> Hi, it's the gang from the Whiskey Roundtable here. We're not here to talk about whiskey. We're here to talk about cigars, Royal Havana Cigars. Royal Havana Cigars is located at 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio. That's 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio. Royal Havana Cigar Lounge is tailored to an old 50s, 60s Cuban theme with a friendly atmosphere. Their walk-in humidor is filled with top cigar brands. Trust us, you're bound to find the cigar you're looking for. Royal Havana's friendly atmosphere and comfortable accommodations gives you the opportunity to relax in one of their fine chairs and enjoy a fine cigar. Try one of their house brand cigars. Royal Havana house brand cigars are rolled fresh every week. Not to mention the price is right. What else does Royal Havana offer you ask? Let us tell you. Check out Royal Havana's large inventory of lighters, cutters, butane, lockers for rent, ashtrays, rocks glasses, and coffee cups. And hey ladies, Royal Havana has gift cards and a clothing boutique. And while you're there, check out the humidor for the fine line of cigars tailored to a woman's taste. That's right, we said it. They have cigars that are specially designed for a woman's enjoyment. Visit Royal Havana Cigars at gmail.com for all of Royal Havana's up-and-coming cigar events. They also host public and private events like weddings, family get-togethers, golf outings, wine tastings, just to name a few. So next time you're in the area, stop in at Royal Havana Cigars and see owner Dave Somrock and mention the name Big G from the Whiskey Roundtable, and you'll receive 10% off your first cigar purchase. Listen, we know what some of you are thinking. You can get a cigar anywhere. But hey, at Royal Havana, you can only get a good cigar. That's Royal Havana Cigars, located at 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio, and tell them Big G from the Whiskey Roundtable sent you. Hello everyone, Doug Dunbar, AKA the Whiskey Wizard here on behalf of the Whiskey Roundtable. Look, I know I'm preaching to the choir as you're all here watching us now, but we need your help in growing our audience and in making this the best show of its kind. Our vision for the show is that it be live and interactive where our listeners are part of the show, not just passive viewers. And we want to entertain and educate, but mostly provide a good venue for hanging out with fellow whiskey lovers and learners. We've made a lot of changes this year, and we realize it's going to be a process of continual improvement, but we feel like our foundation is solid. Please, if you have friends or family who are fans of whiskey, or who may have even the slightest interest in learning more, 
Send them our show link and encourage them to watch. Better yet, invite them over to share a dram and watch with you. Check out our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If we grow our subscribers enough, we can add more new and exciting aspects to the show and realize our vision of having the best live whiskey show available anywhere. And we want you all to be a part of that. Again, on behalf of the whole Whiskey Roundtable crew, let us say thanks for your support and thanks for tuning in every week. We love you all. So long, cheers, and slanja. back boy that was quick yes <laughs> yeah it seemed fast we've got yeah like it's like oh minutes. we've got like four or five minutes to do what we need to do and like my best friend <laughs> but that was quick seemed like just a minute ago i had a drink that's it too funny all right so we talked about the wild turkey we talked about why people keep it on their bar and we talked about the change in the bottle <laughs> And the branding and For supposedly the, uh, a different taste. Spirit. So, is there anything about Kentucky Spirit per se versus like what are, are they trying to do? Something anything different? Um, is there any any? You know, I didn't find a lot on it. Um, I just it's 101 proof and uh, single barrel bourbon. Each barrel is hand selected by Jimmy Russell. Okay. Right. Well, let's just let's get into tasting then, shall All we? Right. Pass it on. You see those names on a bottle, you know you're not going to get cheated. No, we'll, we'll probably get, get a nice whiskey. Make sure pass it around, leave it. Cheers. Oh, oh, keep no, nice. Thank you. Keep going. Sorry, kids. Sorry. She'll be coming around. Okay. She comes. She'll be. She'll be screaming like the devil. There's <laughs> that uh, <laughs> beautiful <laughs> autumnal color there. Right. Yep. It is a darker amber-ish color. Ooh, wild turkey smell, definitely. Oh, definitely wild turkey smell. So let's, let's do some, let's do some let's nosing then, shall we? Yeah, let's do some nosing. What do you guys get on the nose there? Ooh. I get the traditional oak, vanilla, caramel. I get, I get, I get like dark some, fruit. Uh, I was going to say a little floral little stuff, but maybe because of the cigar, I'm not sure. Too early. A little bit of citrus. I get to, citrus. a little tobacco, maybe um, definitely caramel, and uh, it's a very unique fruit. I can't put my thumb on it. It's either a pear or fruit. apricot. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, like a dark fruit. Yeah, a pear that's, or apricot or something. Yeah, that's light fruit, but yeah, I was thinking more of a, a dark. It's not cherry. I mean, it's a very busy mm -hmm. nose. I mean, there's a lot yeah, going on in the is. nose. It's a nibby nose. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like some toffee or something like that on the sweet end. Hmm. And I always say this, you know, if we ever do a blind tasting, I'm like, I will be able to pick out that wild turkey. But when you when you know it's wild turkey and you nose it, it yeah, I mean you definitely get when you that. nose it, you know it. You when it. you nose, you nose. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's it just what do you get, familiar. Albert? What do you get? I'm getting some on nice legs on the oh yeah the glass there. Not beautiful gotta... color, nice legs on this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not a, not a real dark color. Mm. Not. Yeah, it actually is a little more gold than than red. If you, the Russell's Reserve was very reddish, yeah, this is more, more like golden. Copper. A lot of them are uh, red. Yeah. Would you say that's oily? Uh, it looks it, just from appearance. You mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got some good legs. If you hear oily, you got to take a shot. Whatever. All right. Well, you give it a taste. Right, let's try the some taste. Oh, so the nose. The nose says it's full-bodied, aromatic with tobacco, leather, wow, butter, toffee, and warm baking spices. Doug, you nailed it. And, and that's a, that's a non-biased estimation because you don't. I mean, you don't smoke tobacco. I so. well, yeah. <coughs> so I, I I but maybe Call because me. you guys have been yeah. smoking, maybe you, that wasn't a flavor you would catch as easy. Exactly. All right, are we going in? Yeah, going in. Taste. Let's go in. Taste almost. Mm. Hmm. It 
tastes better than those. Vanilla, caramel, butterscotch. Need yeah, a second opinion. I uh, yeah, I want to. I need a second opinion. opinion too. You know, as my girlfriend always says, the tongue's always better than the nose. Oh, mm-hmm. wherever she may be. <laughs> rest her soul. <laughs> God, rest God rest her, her soul. soul. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, comment your favorite whiskey, and mention Anthony's, and you can win a $30 gift certificate. Anthony's um, Men's Barbershop. In Twinsburg I, and Bainbridge. I'm getting uh, butterscotch, and I get... I get butterscotch. On I'm the, getting on some, the, on the even some, maybe mint. I do get mint on the aftertaste. Do you? I do. I'm getting more of a coconut than a mint. No, the, the, the finish for me was all mint, actually. Really? Yeah. I just, I just when I just nosed it again mm. after tasting, I got coconut. Okay. But okay. on the taste, I I, I, I'm not getting on the taste. I just I get a little bit of mint along with the butterscotch. Obviously, oak and vanilla are prevalent. So. Yeah, I get, I get mint. Uh, I actually get mint heavy on the on the yeah. on the aftertaste. I mean, pure mint. Yeah, a lot of mint, and it's good. You know, I get the butterscotch. That was the first thing I. When I, I sampled it, the, I didn't. But I didn't get that till like my third sample, and uh, and then the, and and that started to really pop for me. So, so if you remember from the Whiskey Wizard episode, what is the chemical compound that's responsible usually for mint flavor? Mint leaves. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll be a future <laughs> trivia question. For Cilicin, Cilicin I can't is. remember the the word. If anybody in our audience remembers the answer to that, you, well, I'll. Uh, I'll, I'll Get you a nice I'll, I'll, bottle. What, what were you Next calling? time you're on the show, we'll give you a ride to Anthony's Salon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say what I want to say, but I, I don't want to embarrass myself. But I think I know what it is. I just can't. I just can't. Put Pop the quiz, together. hot chat. So, when you say mint, so to me, there's a wide range of mint. You've got mint, mint. You've got spearmint. You've got so like if you, so if you if you eat a York mint. peppermint patty, the aftertaste you have that coolness, there's and you got that mint that, that yeah. mint flavor, that mint. Uh, Ethanol, so to say. Yeah. Okay. You know, I methyl. do get a little yeah. bit of that. Yeah, so that's what I'm talking about. I but get... it's uh, very subtle and it's it's, it's herbal. Yeah. It's not it's yes. not like it's not medicine. What's or, or like an herbal? Even. I, I I personally think it has a long finish. In my personal I, opinion. Yeah. You know. What do you think was subtle? Hmm? Which part did you think was subtle? I'd say the butterscotch, in my opinion, was. But what's the proof on this? But just enough to know. One on one. One on one. One on one. I mean, yeah, the legs just. You can see it. It's, it's a yeah. nice batch. And the last week's Russell Reserve was 110, so much more potent. But um, um, I, I like. Well, it. I mean, we're, I think, I think we're not scoring yet, but I, I I do like this one as well. What do you, what do you get? What do you get on the? Uh... So what do I get on the palate? You guys are like right there. So oak and vanilla up front, caramel, mint. Called it. Cinnamon. And plum on the back. We were talking about fruit yeah, yeah, on the nose. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't put my thumb on it. <laughs> your thumb on the... My plum on it. You couldn't stick your thumb in it? or <laughs> My thumb on the plum. Dear Lord, isn't that a... Jack Horner, a little Jack Horner. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, the finish, it just says long, earthy, and smooth. Yep, so I, I, don't, agree. I don't get a lot of earthy. No, there. I don't get earthy either, but I get the, I get the, I get the long, and, and I definitely get the smooth. I think that's part of it. But... Yeah. Oh, you go into the camera, Albert? Perfect. Um, there you go. I would say there's a certain earthiness to almost all of Oh, them. I agree. Absolutely. Kind of as the general. Perfect. Just like a lot of times profile. we talk, we, we, when we critique, we don't, I don't always say vanilla and caramel because, I mean, everything that I drink. Well, vanilla whiskeys, is actually get, the predominant correct. flavor in bourbon, right? Correct. Because of the charred barrel aging. In fact, if you. If you're tasting a Scotch whiskey, and you know it's been, as most of them mm-hmm. are in first fill bourbon casks, that's where all the vanilla comes from in in a, in a Scotch whiskey. So, but yeah, um, I almost like you. I don't almost mention vanilla because you can you're say right. it almost well, say with I'm most about everything. In right. fact, if if it if it's lacking and I don't get any vanilla, then I usually comment on it. So, so I'm curious though when you mention that, like. I wonder what the char is on this barrel. Does it happen to say? I don't think so. But they I'm often say won't tell you that. Yeah. They don't necessarily mention that. Looking at the color, I'm going to say it's it's definitely it's, a four. It's yeah. pretty light. I you think I so. Think from where I'm sitting, here, I think it it's a dark. maybe a two three barrel. I think it's more a three. Is it? I mean, from where I'm sitting, it looks real yeah. dark. It does. Well, 
Remember when, uh, if you think of one of your single barrel old foresters, mm -hmm. what would you say the char is on that? I would say it's a three or four. Yeah, that's yeah. that's so. what it is because when we were at the distillery, that's what they told us. So. Yeah, I was really um, excited about the nose, but uh, the palate really let me down. Really? It's just real busy. I mean, I, it I is, still taste mint I mean, like 30 I, seconds I, later. I think it was smooth. I mean, well, that's not mm. what my girlfriend says, but. Okay. Rest her soul. I'll bet. Rest her soul. <laughs> so Jennifer I'll says. I bet this would be very good in a mint julep. Ah, ah that's yeah. why they said you can mix it or yeah, drink it yeah. straight. Jennifer says that rye gives it that mint flavor. So I don't know what the mash bill is on this, yeah. but I'm curious how much rye is. I don't know if it says on the bottle. Does it give the mash bill on the bottle? Probably not. Yeah, Beverly Hills gives bottles of uh, Harold. On this side, bourbon concierge, no mash bill. It's 75% no uh, corn, 13% okay. rye, and 12% malted barley. Thank you, Zach uh, Delicious. Zach Delicious. Zach, Zach Attack. Me. That's, why, that's, that's why, why we love him. That's why he's our producer. My <laughs> man. For sure. Good job. Yeah, no, um, so not a lot of rye to pull the mint out, but yeah. I, I agree with you. I think I got more the mint on the finish mm -hmm. than on the palate itself. So uh, are we scoring, or what are we doing mm -hmm. there, kids? That would be the next thing on the agenda. So uh, as usual, I'm going to oh, well, let's break tradition. Let's go. Uh, let's start out with uh, Albert. Albert. Well, well, okay, Albert's. How about you? How about Gary? Let's start with Gary because Albert's. <laughs> I was born ready. Just starting. Okay. I was born ready. <laughs> well, well you guys will bring it up a little bit, but uh, you know, I'm a little disappointed. I, I just expect a little bit more. You know, with you know, with those two names on the bottle, and you know, the nose excited me, but everything after that was, uh, I don't know, it was just too much going on. It was too busy. It conflicted. You know, the. For me, it was just way too much mint, and uh, you know, if if the bottle didn't have a label on it, I'd probably give it like a four point three and say it was okay. But you know, it's it's wild turkey, you know, it's Jimmy it's and Eddie, man. Spirit. So you know, you kind of have to bring the bar up a little bit. I'm going to say for like a three point nine, maybe a four. Okay, well, yeah, about three point nine. How about Albert? What do you what do you say, Albert? I'm still going to drink it. I'll say this. I have to respectfully disagree with you, Gary. Thank I, goodness. The nose was okay. Like I thought the nose was nice, but then when I went to taste it, it really caught me off my guard, man. I mean, it knocked my socks off. I, I gotta say, like I'm gonna give it that 4.3 you mentioned earlier. That's just beautiful. Me. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Everyone's got a different palate. That's right. Well, that's the fun of doing this. All right, Greg. Let's go to Big G. What do Big you think? G. I'm gonna give it a solid uh, 4.2. Very, very so good that's score. a good score very for good you. Score. So what what really boosted you to that? Um, I I, I uh, you know sometimes for me when things are are a little busy in the bottle so to say, um, you know it, it's 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 fun for me to try to decipher what's in there. Okay. Yeah. So I don't I don't always uh, say it's a deterrent so to say. I, I think that uh, I think it's it's kind of cool to to you know learn learn your whiskeys you know so. Uh, I gave it a good score, and I I, I like the. Uh, <laughs> Remember my first cigar. I like. <laughs> first time, first time on the show. <laughs> it would appear. I'll have so a little more of that, Gary. <laughs> Thank it's you. very good. So uh, you. thank good. you very much. It's good. I'm going to try to drink my way up to a 4.2. There you go. <laughs> that score will keep improving here. That's his, that's his blood alcohol content he's working for. That's, <laughs> that's right. right. Okay. Try now, Greg, a... Greg, I have to say I'm with you because the first score that popped into my head was a 4.3. Mm -hmm. And I got to I gotta stick with it because I, I do like it. I think it's got a great nose. Mm -hmm. It's a sweet it is. It's it's good all around. I mean, it's uh, uh, you know what is it? Fifty bucks a bottle somewhere around there. Somewhere it's around. sixty. My sixty-three. Sixty-three. You know, is it, is it sixty? Does it drink like sixty-three? No, but it, it, does yeah. it drink like fifty? Fifty-five? Yes. So for a couple of dollars, 
I would spend a couple. I mean, of it dollars. was probably sixty-three because of the limited availability. Sure, but, um, but yeah. I, I like it. I like it. I do too. I, I, I just it's very refreshing to and me. I, and I think I think uh, I think we have. I want to say we have four or five different years for that. So wow. we're, we're going to dip into this um, just so that we can do a little comparison. We might oh. as well finish this yes. off later. Okay. Just to see what we think because, you know, they, they said that it changed once uh, Russell's Reserve came out. But I don't know. Then that has to be fantastic because I'm very pleased with this. So um, I'm, I'm, you know, I like to be original, but I, I have to be honest. I, I'm right with you guys exactly. Um, 4.3 for me as well. All right. Nice score, Doug. This may be the so first time I've I do had to like score. this very much. Um, yeah, that's right. Everybody's. I don't like it as much as the Brussels Reserve we had last week. Everybody's palate's different. And um, I have people that have had me try some of the stuff that they thought they spent $500 on or 100 bucks. You got to try to try this, you know. And sometimes they they let that price point. Yeah. Rule their brain, or yeah. you know, and I, I, I've had I've, I I had I won't I won't talk about the product. I had a at, at retail a five hundred dollar bottle at a friend of mine's house out in Madison this year, and you were there, and uh, he was so happy with with this bottle that he got, and he says, "Wait, till you try this? Could knock your socks off." And I was like, Psh. you know, I I I thought. Old granddad bottled and bond drink better than it. Damn. I mean, that's, I mean, so. Yeah, it's, I've had, we've all had that, man. I mean, but um, this is, uh, I wasn't, in, I'm intrigued because of the, what's, I, I would say this is different. Mm -hmm. um, I like, there's a little, that, le I, I would call it leather. Um, yes. Sure. That plum Good call. for sure. And sure. the mint, I mean, that's a little bit unique, I think, so. I, think I do turning, like it. I think, I think we're we, turning Doug into a wild turkey man. Maybe. You and, know, and, and I mean, between all of us, we, we, we kind of we kind of took the nose and the the you know the nose. I mean, look forward the, to November. In the palate, we kind of we kind of we kind of all of us kind of pulled everything out of yeah. all of that. Maybe yeah. maybe on not all on, on the same, but you pick this, I pick this, you pick this, this you pick. But I mean, we at, at the end of the day, we we got it overall. So I think we're right on with the uh, palate and the uh, nose. And uh, I, I think it's a good product. Well, we are going to have some fun in, in December. I, I'm going to do one of the whiskey wizards is us going to be. We're going to be on location somewhere. We're going to do some blind tasting. All right. So nice. I'm looking forward to that. Oh shit. So I just want to call out now. You know, we talked about turning Doug into a wild turkey man, but that shirt. So what does it say now? Read it out loud. Gary, go What's ahead. It Gary, what does it say? I prefer my what my turkey wild, and on the I can't see the other on side. The rocks. Rocks. On the rocks. On the rocks. <laughs> Which is not actually true, but that's what the T-shirt says. Been there, bought the shirt. So yes, did you exactly. do the distillery tour when you were down there? Yes, we've been to actually there twice. Oh. Um, Sean and I went once on our way down to visit the girls in Nashville, and then we we went. I think we had. The kids with us. Cameron was with us, right? And we went. And Zach. Well, you then. I wasn't on that one. But anyway, I've been there twice. You guys may have been there. Enough. I didn't go the time you went. Yeah, when it, you, was, it was closed when I was down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just missed it. When you went to go visit your daughter, <laughs> my daughter and Shauna's. My and, and Our Shauna's. Daughters. There's an S. Our okay. Shauna's got daughters. Well, we've already we've already covered <laughs> that. The party. Show. Whenever I say my son or my daughter, that I do that. Awesome means do. and Shauna's. He I, does I, it. Do, I go, do. Let's go to my house. Let's go to my house. She's like, uh, I live there too. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know because you're not washing the clothes. Have <laughs> you? <laughs> anyway, hey, we got a couple people out here commenting on All right. Anthony's. All right, here we go. So got? we still got a thirty dollar gift card for a nice cut at Anthony's in Twinsburg and Bainbridge. Let me just chime in real quick. The $30 gift certificate is good for any products, shave or cut in the store. It's good for anything. And it's located yeah. at 2681 Creekside Drive, Twinsburg, Ohio, 44087. Anthony's Men's in Bainbridge or Twinsburg. 
I bet if you ask nice, I'll give you that well, hot towel hitter. I'm, I'm, right I'm, I'm <laughs> reading through the scroll, and I see only one person answered that question uh, properly. So, and uh, Rusty? Rusty Patrick Patterson, although he's not eligible for Anthes, is enjoying mm-hmm. his Lagavulin 16, nice whiskey. Nice. Rus- Rusty, Rusty guy, I'm reading down through the scroll. He's yeah, the only Rusty. one that and then, answered uh, it right. Rusty's on, on it. On our next show, the whiskey whiz we're going to talk about what what you should pair with that from a food standpoint. So, oh, which but, reminds me, yeah. I found a fantastic recipe for you because you know I don't cook, and it is a bourbon glazed turkey. Oh, and I and I copied that right there, and I'm going to send that to you. You send it to me. I will do that. All right. And but they actually have it with the uh, shoot. What's the bourbon they have? Ezra Brooks. Is actually the bourbon that they're using for the glaze. So what, Ezra Brooks. Ezra Brooks. Okay, original Ezra Brooks. Okay, I see it. With some brown sugar and some salt. That's, so that Ezra. That that's big money, Ezra Brooks. That's like yeah. fifteen bucks a bottle right now. Oh, oh. no, you didn't, Steve mm-hmm. Williams. <laughs> he wants to know if they shaved back hair. Oh. <laughs> 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 that gift card could also be used at PetSmart. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, Steve, to to answer your question, uh, you let me know when you're done shaving Donnelly's back, and we'll go. Ah. Go for Donnelly, Donnelly, Donnelly. Pat Patterson says he would enjoy a hot shave one day on a visit. So, well, we got to have that. We have a pond in the pool. We have a pool in a pond. Chris has been on the show, and uh, we're looking forward to that that time that you get to visit and we want you to demonstrate that special talent that you have too while you're here. So. Who, Chris? Uh, Pat. Sorry. Oh, Pat? Oh, Pat. Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, actually, this is a talent Chris also has, but... Um, Making whiskey disappear? Is that his talent? No. I, I, is it drinking <laughs> and falling down? <laughs> Making cigars disappear? Well, they <laughs> both have that talent, no. He's a regular Houdini. Okay. Oh, that's great. Um, All right, so... So, we, it's time for... Whiskey Wizard? Whiskey Wizard. Whiskey Wizard. Whatever. Remix. What you said. The whiskey was. <laughs> you know that guy. Let's try it one more time. All right, everybody. We're gonna uh, go to the whiskey <laughs> whiz, <laughs> and we'll see you back here in just a few minutes. He's been turkeyed. <laughs> He's all full of stuff. Oh my God! Just please hang back. We'll Woo! be back. Whiskey wizard. <laughs> It's the Whiskey Wizard! Hello and welcome to the Whiskey Wizard, where we say that whiskey making takes scientific knowledge and artisan skill and dedication and a bit of the wizard's alchemy of light, air, earth, and fire. Tonight we have something of a special salute to go along with the Whiskey Roundtable's last episode before Thanksgiving. So we're going to take a look at the namesake of the great whiskey brand we've been featuring over this month of November. And as we'll see, it's a perfect emblem for an American whiskey and in many ways a very good emblem for America itself. First off, the wild turkey and the Muscovy duck are the only two domesticated birds native to the New World and the Americas. The turkey's original range is believed to be southern United States and northern Mexico. In the early 1500s, European explorers brought home wild turkeys, as the native people they encountered had already domesticated them. Turkeys quickly became popular on European menus because of their large size and great flavor, enriched by their diet of wild nuts. Later, when English colonists settled on the Atlantic coast, they brought the domesticated turkeys with them. In fact, the English name of the bird is probably due to early shipping routes that started in western Spain and ultimately passed through the country of Turkey on their way to delivering the birds to European markets. And so it seems the name stuck. I always thought the two names were just a coincidence. Turkeys are the largest members of the Galliforms, which are species of ground-dwelling birds that include grouse, pheasants, and of course, the chicken. Turkeys exhibit the trait of sexual dimorphism, meaning that males are much larger and more brightly colored than the females. Adult males can reach 24 pounds, whereas hens rarely reach more than 12 pounds. Males provide no care for their offspring, and the hens care for them for a few days to weeks until they can forage and feed for themselves. 
The chicks gang together in groups of several hens and their offspring, with groups sometimes reaching as many as 200 individuals in winter. Wild turkeys' numbers dwindled to critical levels by the early 20th century. Conservation efforts beginning in the 1940s started the bird on its long road to recovery in the wild. Today, their numbers and range may be at its greatest extent ever, and that's a fine thing. Four point eight, just saying. I mean, this Native American species has been such a part of our country's tradition. Wild turkeys prefer mixed hardwood and conifer forests. Their range extends throughout the eastern and midwestern United States and some limited parts of Mexico and the western mountain areas. Unlike their domesticated cousins, wild turkeys can fly, although not usually for very long distances typically limited to less than a quarter mile. They have good eyesight, but poor night vision, so they usually roost in trees overnight to avoid predation. Turkeys can, however, protect themselves, especially males, using their sharp barbed spurs as an effective weapon to discourage would-be predators. While it's not true that Benjamin Franklin officially petitioned Congress to make the wild turkey our national symbol, he did write a letter to his daughter, Sarah, wherein he stated that he thought the bald eagle to be a bird of bad moral character, sometimes robbing other birds and animals of their kills or eating carrion. He told her that the turkey, a true Native American, was a bird of honor and courage that would endeavor to defend against a whole British regiment should they attempt to invade its farmyard or nesting grounds. And the wild turkey might therefore be a better national symbol. Native Americans used the bird as a food source, yet most revered it, attributing to it special powers and mystical significance. In some tribes, only the chief could wear turkey feathers on his headdress. Of course, surviving accounts from the Plymouth colony settlers do indicate that turkey was often on the menu at feasts and special occasions. So no doubt it would have been part of the fair on that first Thanksgiving along with native corn and squash, and quite frankly, most likely seafood would have been part of such a feast taking place in coastal New England. The pilgrims celebrated the first Thanksgiving after their first harvest in the New World in October 1621. This feast lasted three days, and written accounts indicate there were 90 Native Americans, 53 pilgrims in attendance, and no doubt, there were a number of turkeys also on the menu. By the way, Thanksgiving has been celebrated nationally since 1789 with a proclamation by President George Washington. President Abraham Lincoln in 1863 proclaimed it a national holiday of Thanksgiving to be celebrated on the last Thursday in November as we still do to this day. And as we may have already discussed, before the wild turkey distillery had been created, one of its founding members took some samples on the now ready product along on a turkey hunting outing, where the participants all marveled at the whiskey and later referred to it as that wild turkey whiskey. And so that's how the distiller's brand name eventually came to be. I would say that wild turkey whiskeys are worthy of their namesake. Native to America, bold without being too aggressive, confident and full of autumn color and spice with a spirited disposition. So give one a try this Thanksgiving holiday. There are many varied bourbon and rye offerings to choose from, and we can say quite confidently that few, if any, will disappoint our viewers. On behalf of the Whiskey Roundtable, let us wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. 2020 has been a tough year in so many ways. We hope you all can gather responsibly with those who matter the most and extend those feelings of gratitude for what we have that's truly important. This is Douglas Dunbar, the Whiskey Wizard for the Whiskey Round Table. Cheers, happy turkey, and now back to the live show. 
back. Nice. It was so obvious. He's like, Karen, <laughs> we're coming back. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> Go to the light, Karen. Oh, well, it's become Go a thing now. It's got to it's gotta get more elaborate every time. At least up to a point. He knows. Yeah, we had some dinner last week. But you know what? It happens. Right, right. So, so yeah, great, so, uh, great info. Yeah, and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. And... Uh, I guess we're in the news. No, well, no. I, I we so, oh, oh, yes. While we were away. Not so fast, my friend. Not Doug, so. so. Uh, I just have to apologize. Doug's getting older. But anyway. <laughs> All right. He's very forgetful. It's, it's that stroke. Thing. Right, Shauna? He's very forgetful. Oh, yeah. He's like, I'm married? <laughs> so, uh, so we had a little bit of the uh, old decanterish pretty bottle, and we all yeah. poured can, can a little me, bit. Can you give me that bottle real quick? The, yeah, the, the, uh, the turkey bottle? Yeah. Show it off. So we are comparing, this is a, an earlier version of Kentucky Spirit Single Barrel, and we're uh, going to compare. And right we now. wanted to try it because of yeah. what I saw in the news that it had changed, it had okay. changed. its flavor profile. All right, so I was right on when I said this. What's that? This is 2016, is what we're trying. Okay. 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 Now, I know that I have a 15 back there, and oh, I have every year, so terrible 15 year. up I mean, I don't have every year. I have from 15 to current. So, but let's also remember that we this have the added up. variable that this these is, are all single barrel selections. So, technically, died. same oh, year, died. different bottle could be totally. Prince. Well, I mean, it's gonna. It could be different. Let's. That's right. the whole idea of a single barrel selection. So, but anyway, nonetheless, let's keep. Keep, um, let's give this a try and compare what we just had with... Um, exactly, yeah. exactly. Like so yeah. I've nosed it already, and uh, it Ooh. is a little bit... So they said that the newer Kentucky Spirit is more more mild. On the nose, this seems more mild. It does seem more mild. I agree with you 100%. <sighs> um, yeah, it's a little different glass for me, but... And, I would and, say, yeah, uh, but I get, I also, I get a lot there's, definite, there's definitely common DNA here. Um, I, I get, I still get a little bit of the leather, a little bit of the dark fruit, and it's about the same color, I think, roughly. I agree with that. So, uh, well, let's see what it the is, taste is. What, do you, the exact same what are you guys getting? Um, what do you think? Do you notice anything different about? Or? I get I get uh, a lot more ethanol. I get more of a spice out of the nose. Do you? I do. And not enough to uh, make me sneeze, but, you know, it's there. <laughs> so. What about you, Gary Albert? Anything different? I think the nose is more consistent with what I expect from buffalo, or not buffalo trees, from wild turkey. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, let's taste. Albert? It's more consistent. Yeah, it's yeah. more Albert? consistent. I agree with Gary. Okay. It's a little heavier. All right, let's try it. A little heavier. I already chugged it, so you know what I think. I'll leave this one off. Wow. I like this a lot better than the uh, than wow. the first one. Um, I first agree. of all, you don't. You I don't, agree with you. You don't have that abundance of mint. I think it's a lot. Wow. It's a lot more smooth. It is smoother. And uh, you get you lot know, of, I get a lot of candy out of it's it. It's a lot more I stated, too. man. A lot of candy. Like, it's a lot more stated. You kind of get that, you know, that that consistency that you expect when you see those two names on a bottle. You know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's I would that's say nice. when you say that's candy, I yeah, I would. It's it's, it's a, sweet. It's a butterscotch, yeah. and there's maybe a little bit of cinnamon in there, and I get just a hint of the mint, but not as much yeah, as with, with, exactly. uh, with the current bottle. It's I, nice. So um, I get the Werther's. Candy. Yeah, okay. yeah, the butter butterscotch. Yeah, the butterscotch. I, I would, I would. Uh, it's, it's comparable to me. It, uh, it, it's, it's comparable. It's just a little bit different. Correct. So I mean, it's de it's it's definitely a family member. Yeah, of, of, exactly. of, the, of the years, right. but um, I, the the other one is good. I think I think the the older one is uh, a lot fl more flavorful. I'd have to I'd have to bump it a point for sure. Yeah. Okay, a whole point. Okay. Uh, maybe it, maybe a tenth. For it's me. a game changer for me, man. It's it's, like, it's very comparable to me. It's I might I nice. might bump it a point, but 
four point three or something. Right, like, exactly. If I were scoring, I'd give this one a solid four, 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 five. You know, I, I, I really, I really like that a lot. I think, you know, the one we started out with, man, I just there was too much going on. There was too much mint, but man, this this really nails it. It was good. Yeah. Like I said I would I would bump it a point. I'd I'd knock it to a four three for sure. No yeah. sense or bumps. Okay. Yeah, no, it uh, it definitely, you do taste the difference. Yeah. Um, and I agree with you, Gary. It's not as minty, and there's more sweet, and uh, it's it's nice. So so that's uh, so that's something on the bucket list for next year. Uh, we right. have we have we have older years, and we'll have newer years. So, so. well, let's say next November we do a different one. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Right. Sounds like a plan. All right. All right. So news. Gee, what do you got? I do have something. Hang on a second here. Sorry, kids. I would. Screwing around. Breaking news. Breaking news. Come on now. Do you need a few more do do do's? He needs a few more do 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 do. Oh, Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace Distillery has announced the release of an OFC bourbon distilled in 1995. Doggy. That's one I was going to talk about. What's OFC? I'm sorry, I'm dumb. I don't know. That's what I was. Do you know what that is? I'm sorry. I can't think of it off the top of my head because you guys just asked me a question that I couldn't. Because I didn't find that. Anybody know what OFC means out there? Old fashioned copper. Okay. Is that what it means? Okay, I hope so. Okay. So that must be the, that in reference to the still. Yeah, old fa- well, old it, it's that's. I say that's what it is, as far as you know. So, so that's the first thing that came to my head. Yes. That's why I blurted it out. So, old okay. farts so we'll, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll see on on the uh, rundown here. Uh, the rare releases of the from the popular distillery showcases the oldest and best barrels aging in their warehouse with 1995 marking only for the fourth time in OFC. And OFC will be offered for sale to the public. First release came in 2016, when Buffalo Trace offered uh, charities around the uh, country rare OFC vintage from 1980, 1982, 1983, which were uh, auctioned to uh, raise almost 1.2 million dollars for causes including cancer services, uh, cystic fibrosis, leukemia, and lymphoma. Uh, children's rights, autism, military veterans, animal protection, arts foundations, and many more. The OFC expressions take their name from the original name of the distillery, Old Fashioned Copper. That's what OFC <laughs> is for. I just looked that up. The name comes from the original name right. of the distillery, which is a national historic landmark. Good OFC, job, which stands Good for job. Old Fashioned Copper. Look at All you. right. I'm yeah. not gonna lie to you. I don't I'm know smart. how I pulled that out of my ass, but I did. Very okay. good. Very so, impressed. You know, sometimes when people ask me questions, with like all of us, when you're talking, you're doing things, you're concentrating, because we're doing a show here. Sometimes people ask me a question, I can't answer it right away. I have to think about it for a second, because it was like the last thing on my mind. You know, that so, turkey anyway. hat made you smarter. That turkey hat made me smarter. <laughs> See the ass on that turkey. Um, Anyway. <laughs> oh, my. All right. So uh, where was I? Uh, tasting notes from this vintage describe cherry cordial on the nose, followed mm. by caramel, a slightly smoked oak. Mm. Dark chocolate, tobacco leaves, and dates are found on the palate, following by a lingering finish of leather, black pepper, and cinnamon. It is bottled at the label standard of 90 proof. Uh, the 25-year-old bourbon will uh, come bottled in a crystal decanter with invalid copper lettering nestled inside a wooden display display case, excuse me, with the uh, Providence uh, card and list of happenings from 1995 to put the uh, age of the special expression in context. Uh, Amazon sold their first book and Windows 95 and had uh, and had just hit a home computers uh, like past releases of OFC 1995 will arrive in limited quantities just 1500 bottles are expected to hit the shelves in December for a suggested retail price put your panties on kids okay I'm ready $2,500 <laughs> a bottle Whoa. What, what, what? oh my gosh I'm not going to lie to you because everybody knows me uh, but he doesn't wear panties, so yeah, give him a right. minute. He'll go put them on. But I'm a thong wearing son of a bitch. Come back. But okay. anyway, um, for twenty five hundred, that's a I red will, panty. I will, 
I will wear panties I, for twenty five hundred. If I find it, I will buy it. Yeah, I will buy it. So that's all I got for news, kids. Well, Glen Scotia unveils a new festive sherry double cask finish, um, and that is Glen Scotia. You yeah, said? so Glen Scotia that is one of the th- three remaining. Um, Campbelltown distilleries, Campbelltown. and so if Every you remember you from our life. Scottish uh, episodes during Scotch Whiskey Month, um, if anybody can tell me before the end of the show, um, what are the other two uh, Campbelltown single malts? <laughs> You're thinking Campbelltown, aren't you? Every time, every time I laugh like a freaking You know, I'm thinking that that would be the perfect distillery name, Campbelltown. But the Glen Scotia Eleven release. Uh, <laughs> Is uh, yeah, very special. Just came out actually this week with the double sherry cask finish. There's only fifteen thousand bottles uh, going to be released commercially. So, Yikes! So move on that fast. Buffalo Trace, uh, Greg just talked about. So all I have is that Rocktown Distillery is a limited edition Arkansas rice bourbon whiskey, hmm. brand new that just released also this month. So there is a very limited edition, uh, very limited release of that. It's a mash bill of 54% Arkansas corn, 36% Arkansas rice, and 10% malted barley. You gotta always have Arkansas. malted barley in there to provide enough. Uh, Ooh, pig suey. Arkansas. The pricing on that. The, uh, Do you have pricing. What's that? Do you have pricing on that. I don't have a yeah, price on that one. They did yeah. not say. That sounds just something. Uh, I would. I think a rice bourbon sounds interesting. I'd like to try to get some of that just to try it. Sake it's like to a me, baby. Japanese Sake, Sake, Sake it to me. Yeah, so that kind of gets us yeah, close to the end yeah. of the show here, folks. Right. So, so don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page if you haven't done that already. Follow us on Facebook. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please. Let us know on Facebook or email us directly at the Whiskey Roundtable at gmail.com. I've been answering. And, I'm sorry. I've been answering some yeah. on Facebook. I've been answering some yeah. some people when I see them. And so before uh, we give the quote today, um, we're going to announce before, that what? the we Anthony, have our winner. Gonna, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Karen, you want to announce it? Yeah. Let me. Let me see. Let me see. What do we got? We have breaking news. We have breaking. Do 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 do. And here. Rusty. Rusty Freeze uh, has won our $30, $30 gift card to Anthony. gift Anthony's. card. So, uh, yeah. So. He was, the, he was the, the first guy, I think the only guy, to well, answer he, the question properly. He definitely mentioned Well, he answered Morgan. it properly, but, you so know, Patrick, we go out of the... So Patrick did it, but I don't think Patrick's... Yeah, but Patrick's, lived, Patrick's in Orange County, California. Yeah, so right. yeah. Probably won't be able to use it anytime soon, but he is going to visit us and be on the show at some point. So. All right. So thank you, Rusty, and enjoy well, thanks, your haircut. Thanks, Rusty, you enjoy that. From mm-hmm. Anthony's Men's uh, Salon and Barbershop in Twinsburg and Bainbridge. And $30. Albert, what's the address? And, what's and the Rusty, address just, Rusty, just so you oh, know... Yeah, um, they actually do bikini trims too. So <laughs> okay, so yeah, of that. bikini Speaking wax. California. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. So, so any our, last words? our closing quote today right. comes from none other than Socrates. Mm. And Socrates said, "Worthless people live only to eat and drink. People of worth eat and drink only to live." So <laughs> leave you with that. Have a Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yes. And uh, we'll see you back on December 4th. I think it's December 4th, son. Okay. Well, that Something was like pretty that. good. Pretty let, good. Me, okay. uh, let me just clear the air. Sorry, kids. December 4th, it December is. December okay. 4th. Yes. So. Everybody, please have a safe, happy Thanksgiving and do what you got to do. Don't let the governor's uh, rules right. stop you. Yeah. Please get together and enjoy because this may be your last year <laughs> together. Amen. And, Do it. Uh, you know, if you have to just close the curtains, close them because maybe you have 11 people instead of 10. So, All right. Uh, you never know. Yeah, but we're rebels. So. Amen. Right. All right, everybody. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next time. We are your hosts of Whiskey Roundtable, Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. Gary Coe, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot. Albert Santilli the <laughs> third. We'll see you next time. All right. See you later. Peace out, guys. Be safe. Not related to Anthony from Anthony. If 
whiskey stopped working Every bar in town would be closing their doors Shutting down Everybody would be trapped with their thoughts Cause nothing else would pay Like bourbon or scotch Oh no Oh no no If whiskey, whiskey stopped working Where the hell would I be? Stopped working, what the hell would I do? Honestly, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't be over you. Whiskey stopped working, whiskey stopped working. Oh, whiskey stopped working, whiskey stopped working. Oh, whiskey stopped working, whiskey stopped working. Oh, poor Jack D would be out of a job. Jameson and me would be cut off. Yeah.